Happy Friday, guys. It's Greg here. Uh, it's been a long week. Uh, I hope everyone had a great week. Um, the weekend's coming, and uh, I just wanted to do a video on uh, another SHTF scenario, and I figure since it's Friday, I'll do something a little more, you know, fun and, you know, less serious and less realistic, I guess you could say. Um, although it's possible it could be real, it's hard to say. So today I'm going to do an SHTF scenario on the possibility of a foreign invasion. Um, now a lot of people are going to think that's crazy and, you know, but I think uh, it's worth talking about because it's kind of something that a lot of people dismiss and a lot of people think would never happen here. Um, because it, in reality it hasn't happened for so long and obviously, you know, we're a world superpower. So, um, you know, it's, it's unlikely in a lot of people's minds, but, uh, I think it's worth discussing. So, uh, since it's Friday, let's, let's discuss this. Um, so foreign invasion, in my opinion, uh, the, the, the chances of a foreign invasion are obviously low. Um, low to medium, I would say right now low, but uh, I think as time goes on, maybe in the future, you know, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years from now, it could be a medium possibility, um, especially because China is growing uh, very fast. Uh, their their economic, uh, their economy is booming, you know, their GDP is growing. They have a lot of technological innovations and they have a lot of dominance in, you know, technology, uh, especially, you know, a lot of, they have a big presence in different parts of the world. Um, you know, they're mining for resources around the globe. You know, they're, they're buying up land in Africa and mining up gold over there. Um, they're just uh, a monstrous uh, country in terms of economy and, and population. Um, so I do feel that, you know, in the future, it's possible that China would be a threat to us potentially, you know, because they're growing so much. And combined with an alliance with Russia, you know, and other bad uh, countries out there like Iran, you know, the, the, the alliance of all of those countries together could potentially, you know, cause a, a create an opportunity for a foreign invasion. Um, so how do I think this would go down? I think that... Uh, there were a for so first of all if there was a foreign invasion how would you respond to that you know how would you handle a foreign invasion what would you do you know have you ever considered that in your prepping you know have you thought about how you would respond if there was you know foreign troops landing in your neighborhood or you know foreign uh, you know tank battalions cruising through your you know your backyard you know, have you ever thought about how you would uh, respond to that? You know, where would you go? How would you protect your family? How would you protect your neighbors? You know, how uh, how would you wage war and, and you know, protect our republic against the foreign invasion? Um, and a, a high, uh, what I recommend is, is that you study a lot of the uh, guerrilla warfare manuals put out by the military. You know, you can download them for free online. Um, you can you can read about you know the different guerrilla warfare tactics and and uh, you know different ways that you can wage uh, unconventional war. Because in, if there was ever a foreign invasion, if there was ever any country that was powerful enough or any alliance or any you know alien you know species that would ever invade the United States, they would have to have some serious manpower, some serious firepower, you know, some serious resources, man, uh, you know, for them to invade the U.S. for anything, any country, any, you know, anything, anything that would invade the U.S. as far as a country, aliens, whatever, they would have to have serious resources and, and a serious military to, to pull that off. So, 
in that situation, I believe the U.S. would probably be severely uh, outnumbered or outgunned. You know, if, if there ever was a foreign invasion of this country, it, it would not be like a, a stalemate or it wouldn't be, in my opinion anyway, it would be probably like a an invasion to the point where we would be, you know, on the, on the losing end. And... Uh, because any country that would commit to, or alliance, any alliance or country that would commit to invading us, you know, they would probably not do it unless they're sure that they can beat us. Just because we have so much uh, firepower, you know, so much uh, weaponry, you know, nuclear weapons, um, you know, but I guess the, the chances of a foreign invasion are low because we have the nuclear deterrent. So if anybody tried invading us, we could just nuke them. Um, you know, but there's always a chance that nuclear weapons could get taken out, you know, if the, depending on how the invasion were to go down. Um, you know, it's possible that they could take out our nuclear weapons first, you know, or we may not want to go the nuclear option just because could cause a, a nuclear uh, winter so that's something also to keep in mind as well that you know just because we have nukes you know it doesn't mean that we could just let 5,000 nukes rip across the world you know if we let them rip you know that could cause a nuclear winter so likely if we were to do a nuclear uh, retaliation it would be very targeted and very strategic you know it would be uh, it would be targeting the, the invading countries you know capital, their infrastructure, their military infrastructure, their power systems, you know, it wouldn't be like, you know, yeah, we're just going to obliterate this whole country with thousands of nukes. You can't do that because that would be self-destructive. You know, we would wipe ourselves off the map, you know, with uh, nuclear winters. So it's something to consider, you know. Um, so, so think about, you know, how would you react in that situation now if you guys ever watched uh, Red Dawn obviously you know this was already played out in Red Dawn and then there was also another uh, 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 a, a second Red Dawn that was made in 2012 with uh, Chris Hemsworth you know the guy who plays Thor and uh, you know he played the role of uh, Patrick Swayze's character from the original Red Dawn and basically, the the, the storyline behind that one was that North Korea launched an EMP, and you know, hit the U.S. with an EMP, and then you know, Russia and China banded together, and they invaded us from both sides of the coast. You know, so Russia invaded from the east coast, and China invaded from the west coast, and you know, North Korea and China invaded from the west, and Russia from the east. And that was already after Russia took over Europe, and then they uh, they squeezed us, you know, from both sides of the coasts. And uh, you know, basically, although the United States is a big country, if you think about it, most of our major cities and critical um, population centers are on the coasts. There's not really any critical. I would say, you know, major metropolitan areas in the interior of our country, which in my opinion is kind of a weakness. Um, even though we're surrounded by, you know, oceans, which create a natural barrier for other countries, you know, because they got to cross the ocean and they have to land troops and all that. Uh, it's still, you know, the fact that we have all of our major economic centers on both coasts means that it really wouldn't be difficult to uh, seize, you know, and control, you know, the, you know, 70% of our economy, you know, because if you think about it, if uh, a military force came over on the East Coast and they were able to, you know, either destroy or seize control of the major cities like New York, Washington, D.C., you know, and then on the West Coast, if they see, you know, seized like Los Angeles and San Diego and those areas there, you know, they're pretty much, you know, and then maybe some areas of, of Texas, you know, on the Gulf Coast there, they're pretty much going to be controlling a large percentage of our economy and, 
that's where our financial center is located in New York City has the you know the largest financial uh, district in the whole country you know Boston is they have another one in Chicago but New York City is obviously like the headquarters if you would say our financial all the biggest banks in the country and in the world have all their headquarters in New York City so that would have a tremendous impact if you know a foreign country were to seize control of New York City or you know bomb it or destroy it you know that would have a massive impact on the financial system on, on our economy um, you know same thing with DC obviously that's the capital uh, however I don't think they would come after the capital first you know just because it's so heavily protected um, and then they could also target our our food supply sorry guys um, they could also target our food supplies you know they could hit the bread basket you know they could target um, oil wells um, there's a lot of things that they could do so you know uh, there's just a, it's it's you know something to think about and like I said it's a Friday so you know don't take this too seriously this is just kind of for fun um, you know so with that in mind you know like I said the coasts are very vulnerable but there's not a lot of population segments in the interior of the country because you know you have mountains you have the Rocky Mountains then you have the, the interior of the US which is mostly plains um, and most of the population centers are on the coasts you know so that's probably where any type of invasion forces would try to seize that quickly and take control you know before they try to you know make their way across the plains and, and you know do all that kind of stuff you know they, you know now that being said we are obviously very heavily protected you know with you know missiles and you know everything you can think of so it would be very difficult if not suicidal to try to invade the US everybody knows that um, there's, you know, there's no question about that, but in this scenario, you know, just think about what, what you would do and, uh, you know, and, and I think that, um, the most likely scenario for us right now, you know, would be an EMP or some type of attack that would take down our power grid on a national scale. It could also be a cyber attack as well. Uh, another thing would be an oil crisis or fuel s shortage. Uh, if, the, if some type of uh, country were to attack our pipelines in the Middle East or, you know, affect our supply, you know, that, that would also have a, a massive impact on our economy. Um, it would cause, you know, gas to skyrocket. It would affect everything. And, and once we're weak like that, you know, then that would open the door for you know, an, an invasion that would follow after that, you know, first they would maybe target our oil supply, target our pipelines, our, our oil, you know, fuel, fuel infrastructure, then they could maybe go after, you know, our power grid would be the next attack, you know, and then after they get the power grid, they could just sit back and watch us kill each other and watch, you know, people starve, then they could, you know, try to do an invasion, you know, and you know, I think that, in my opinion, if there were to be some type of foreign invasion, like I said, they would probably target the coasts. They would target the big cities first and try to gain control or sabotage them. You know, this way they could sabotage our economy and our main, you know, economic centers, our population centers. Um, and then I think after that, they would probably go after... Uh, they would probably or they may also sabotage critical infrastructure like power uh, generating facilities nuclear power plants you know cable lines oil pipelines uh, railroads airports things like that you know they could uh, they could send sleeper agents even and, and have them do that first you know or they can send uh, airborne troops you know special special airborne troops and they could land in, in our country or you know and then just try to sabotage key areas like especially power grid areas you know power generators 
uh, interstate transmission lines, substations, things of that nature, you know, things that are hard to replace and take time to replace and that have a big impact on our, on our power grid and on our infrastructure, water supplies, dams, things like that, you know, they're going to target our critical infrastructure. And, and if you want to read more about the critical infrastructure, you can, uh, you can go with uh, Homeland Security. They have their own classification of, of the different critical infrastructure areas. And I think there's like 17 different uh, areas of our, that they consider critical infrastructure, you know. And uh, if you can look, look that up online, I'll, po I'll actually post a link in the description box so you can review that. It's good to know, you know, what the different critical infrastructure areas are. Um, and so, you know, so I think the coasts would be a target, definitely. Major cities would be a target for invasion. You know, they're not going to go after suburbs first. They're going to target, you know, economic centers, critical infrastructure. They're going to want to come in quickly and cripple us, cripple our ability to function and cripple our infrastructure. That's the first thing they're going to do. And then after that, they're going to target, you know, suburban areas, etc. You know, um, it doesn't have to be China and Russia. It could be some future, you know, evil empire or some type of crazy dictator like Hitler or somebody like that that's trying to take over the world or take over the U.S. or whatever, you know. Uh, this is just a fictional thing, so you can use your imagination, but... I think they would try to cripple our infrastructure, you know, that's typical uh, military, you know, strategy is that, you know, you go after the infrastructure first, you go after, you know, the food supply, power grid, uh, you know, all those types of things, economic centers, financial centers, financial districts, you know, and cripple that first, population centers, you know, cripple that first, and then you can worry about, you know, taking over other aspects of the country and obviously another thing too is uh you know you want to cripple you know you want to cripple the military infrastructure as well um you know because if you cripple the military infrastructure that's obvious you know it prevents the country from fighting back you know it's just like when the united states when we invaded uh iraq in afghanistan the first things we did is we sent the air force in and we bombed all the, the military sites for, you know, Saddam Hussein's, you know, military, whatever military he had. You know, we sent the jets in, you know, they use different types of jets. They probably use, you know, F-22s, you know, stuff like that, stealthy, stealthy jets, um, you know, stealthy means that they could fly in, bomb the critical areas, you know, like airports, you know, military uh, installations, bases, uh, especially 